Coming soon on Spectrum, RCN, and Verizon Files, Queensboro Performing Arts Center presents Keith David celebrates the music of Nat King Cole. Keith David has over 150 film credits to his name. He earned a Tony Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor for his role in Broadway's Jelly's Last Jam. I'll tell you about my first and only Tony nomination. That was for <laughs> Jelly's Last Jam. And I had a one, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a phenomenal experience. I mean, if you saw Jelly's Last Jam, you, you, you know, you know that it was, it, it was just a magnificent conglomeration of wonderfulness. <laughs> you know, Luther Henderson, George Wolfe, uh, 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 Ruben Santiago, uh, Gregory Hines, Tonya Pinkins. I mean, it was it was it was wonderful. It was wonderful, uh, and and I, you know, was in the journey of developing it. So we, you know, we workshopped it for three years in Los Angeles, premiered it in Los Angeles, and then brought it before it came to Broadway. And it was, you know, it was just an incredible journey. One of the red letters in my life. Keith David is also an Emmy Award winner whose humble beginnings started in Harlem, New York, and he was raised right here at East Elmhurst, Queens. He realized he wanted to become an actor after playing the cowardly lion in his school's production of The Wizard of Oz. At the age of 12, he was serious and studied at the Harlem School of the Arts. And then he went to New York's High School of Performing Arts, SUNY Purchase, and Juilliard. Keith David looks back at a few memorable performances at Performing Arts and Juilliard. I played Kilroy in 10 blocks at the Camino Real. That was, um, and, and that was that when I was a senior. Yeah, and, and uh, got, uh, did that with Freddie Prinz, playing, nice. playing Jacques Casanova. Very nice. And at Juilliard? My most memorable performance at Juilliard? Oh, I had several. Boosman and Lena. Um, um, Mac Heath in the Beggar's Opera. Uh, Othello. Those were the highlights. The highlights. I mean, and Spring Awakening. Spring Awakening was a big highlight. Excellent. But we, we didn't do the musical, we did the straight play. When I asked Keith about his teachers, he spoke fondly of mentors who passed the torch. Dr. Chauncey Northern was my first singing teacher. He was a, a great, great man and a wonderful influence. Uh, and along with him, uh, af after, after I uh, uh, was with Dr. Northern for, you know, on and off about 20 years, uh, then I met Thomas Young and uh, Ben Matthews, and and and, and I, now I have I've been studying with May and Bishop for um, a few years, and I just love him to life, and you know I mean, and all the, it, it it all followed a great progression as if uh, as if they. Uh, um, were spiritually taking care of me. His formal training earned him awards for his narration of three Ken Burns documentaries, Jackie Robinson, The War, and Unforgivable Blackness, The Jack Johnson Story, and was nominated for his narration of Jazz. In total, he received six Emmy nominations throughout his career. I think my first Emmy nomination was, um, I think it was for Gargoyles. But now I don't remember what came first, whether the Tiger Woods story or Gargoyles. I was nominated for the Tiger Woods. I've been nominated about six times. I've, I've won three. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've, I've been nominated about six times. So that, that's, that's been a really great. Keith is also known as a diversified actor. A few of his films include The Princess and the Frog, Crash, Barbershop, Agent Cody Banks, there's something about Mary, Armageddon, and dead presidents. This brings me to the drama series Greenleaf. It's about the unscrupulous world of the Greenleaf family and their sprawling Memphis megachurch with scandalous dark secrets and lies thrill their viewers. Greenleaf is produced for OWN, Oprah Winfrey's network by Lionsgate. Keith David plays Bishop James Greenleaf. Here's what Keith had to say about the series. So let's talk about one of the series that you're on now. You played a bishop in Oprah's own Greenleaf. 
So tell us a little bit about that character for anyone who doesn't know it. I think everyone knows about Greenleaf, but just give a little overview. You know, it's a family drama. It's a family drama about what happens, you know, outside of the pulpit. That's what, it, you know, I mean, you know, uh, basically, uh, I, I have said repeatedly, the bishop is just a man. <laughs> You know, now we, we and, you know, we do hold him to a different standard as we should. Uh, but you know, he's he does fall short of sainthood. Uh, and you know, this is the we're in the fourth season now. When we pick up in the first season, he's in a season of his life where he is ready to atone for that which he has done up till now. He's ready to, to face what that is. Now, of course, the closer one gets to actually facing it, you know, it's that prayer, oh God, does it have to be right now? Um, uh, and can I circumvent it somehow? So, of course, the, you know, they, you know they, they go through all of that, as human beings do. The ups and downs of life. Yes, I mean, I, I, you know, I believe even for a moment, gee, even Jesus said, does it have to be me now? Of course he knew, yes, it does have to be me. But you have to ask the question. That's right. Does it have to be now? So I saw in season four that you were able to work in Unforgettable yes. into the series. Yes, so indeed. tell my viewers about that. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I mean, any chance I get to sing is always a great one. Um, so, you know, we... we Managed to squeeze it in the script. So when did you find your first love for Nat King Cole's songs? And I know why, but it's just beautiful. Oh, I've been in love with Nat since I was like seven years old. Um, I just felt that, uh, you know, to me, Nat sounded on the outside like I sounded to myself inside. Um, and as, as I say in the show, I've... I, I discovered very early in my life that there was a Nat Cole song to fit any emotion that I ever had. I mean, you can always, I mean, somewhere along the way, Nat sort of, you know, gets to everything. He, I mean, in, in that sense, and, and this is a big stretch, I know this is a stretch, but in that sense, in the way that Shakespeare writes about every, about the human experience and every, every you know, emotion within the human experience, Nat, somewhere along the way, has sung a song that deals with the uh, emotional life of every man, certainly. But, you know. And, and what can we expect this afternoon? To have fun. Yes. <laughs> Just to have a bunch of fun as I tell a few stories. Thank you so much for joining me on Queen's Perspectives. All right. Well, I appreciate you. Here's a sneak preview of his performance. I believe that anyone who believes in love at all wants to be in love like Nat Cole sings about. Is that not right? Yeah. Right? I didn't hear you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I heard thought so. See, now even before I knew anything about love or what even that could mean, I know that I wanted to feel the way I felt hearing him sing about it. When I was nine years old, I did my first play. I played the cowardly lion in The Wizard of Oz. Now the young lady playing playing of Glenda the Good Witch was Myrna Cespedes. Oh my God, I thought she was so beautiful. Oh, and I know that she, she knew how I felt because, well, it was in the eye, you know, the way I looked at her and she looked back at me, you, you know. And so I told Mr. Tobias, my, one of my teachers, I said, I think I'm in love. <laughs> she gives me palpitations. He said, son, go home, it's hard for her. <laughs> When I, when I asked my grandma about it, she said, now you're too young to be thinking about any of that. You just hit those books. And I guess that Mirna's folks must have told her the same thing because, well, she, she believed them. And it's around that time that I discovered that there was a Nat King Cole song for every emotion that I ever felt. They try to tell us we are young, too young to really be in love. They 
Let There Be Love is his theatrical journey into the music and life of one of America's greatest artists, Nat King Cole. Tune into this unforgettable presentation with Keith David. I'm Rosalind Nieves. Thank you for watching me on Queen's Perspectives.